Okay, uh, I want to go through two example problems dealing with some important ideas um, in our game theory examples. The first is about interpreting the solution, and the second is um, about how to decide between two options in a larger problem. So to start, we have a simple problem about Uncle Steve and Aunt Vicky deciding what they want to put the chicken on. They've expressed their opinions, and we need to find, they've hired an outside arbitrator, that is us, to determine the solution to this important situation. We begin by entering their utilities just as lists. This next piece, I'm, I have to do this in order to create the polygon that I'm going to plot in Python. And basically what it's doing is it's putting these two individual lists together as a single object and then t and, and rotating it 90 degrees so that what we have, um, oops, I need to import my library, sorry. Uh, so that what we have is a two, is four rows and two columns rather than uh, two rows and four columns here. This is just the first point, zero, zero, second point, two, zero, four, two, and one, five. And again, this is just how I need to present the information to matplotlib to plot this. So in plotting, we have two new commands here, uh, or two things that we may be unfamiliar with. The first is that I, I, I'm going to create this object that's a subplot over the graph itself, and then I'm going to add a patch, which is the payoff polygon, to that. These, are the, these two lines here are, pro, are, are the new pieces, and that was also, I, I needed to import my patches library in order to do this, but patches is like, uh, different uh, closed shapes and a way to a way to put those closed shapes on the plots. So everything else should seem familiar. I'm just adding a little bit of space on the x and y limits so that we can see all the points, add the uh, x and y axes in a little title. Um, and so here's our payoff polygon. Okay, well, we're going to be between this point and this point. Those are our options. The, the solution has to be somewhere in between these two points. Um, where in between those two points? Well, Nash's theorem says that that's, it's at the point that maximizes x times y. To maximize x times y, we need to write an equation for this line. We'll do that by just taking the slope of the line between those two points and using the x and y coordinates of one of them. The slope is negative 1, and I chose the point uh, 4, 2. So if I put that into my point slope form, I get this equation, and I can simplify that further to get negative x plus 6. Thus, I'm looking for the maximum of x times negative x plus 6, or negative x squared plus 6x. From here, I'm going to go ahead and define a function that's negative x squared plus 6x. I'm going to say I'm working in SymPy because uh, I want to find the derivative and, and solve that equation. Uh, I'll find the derivative of that function solve for when it equals zero, and then I can print those out. Um, and here's what we find. The derivative, negative 2x plus 6. That's exactly what I would expect if I found it by hand. and certainly solve this by hand. If I solve for when this equals zero, I'd have to subtract 6 from both sides, and I have negative 2x equals negative 6. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is 3. So there's our solution. That's when, um, that's the critical point for that function. And similarly, I, this goes with y equals 3 because if I plug x equals 3 into this equation here, negative 1 times x minus 4 uh, plus 2, I get 3. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that, add that point to my plot here. And he, okay, so there's our solution. But it's, it, it's more a matter of interpreting it now. What does this mean? What does this solution mean? Because it doesn't mean uh, potatoes, it doesn't mean chicken. It means some sort of mixture of potato and chicken options. Well, um, so what we do is we take our solution, the solution points were 3, 3, and we use either the x coordinate in combination with the x values for these utilities or the y coordinate of our solution in the combination of the y values for these utilities to solve for what that mixture of each should be. 
Thus, we can look at it from Aunt Vicky's case. We knew that the solution was at the coordinate 3. We also know that that's between her choices for pasta and potato. Further, we know what her utilities for those are. They're 2 and 5. So we're left with the probability of pasta and the alternative probability of going with potato, which is just going to be whatever this probability is, the difference between 1 and that. We just have a simple equation, then we can solve. Um, and once we solve this, we get the probability of 2 thirds. And just for, uh, for completeness, you see, if we had done that from Uncle Steve's perspective, now we have um, 3 and we have Steve's utilities for pasta and potatoes as 4 and 1, we end up with the same probability as we should. Right? The, the answer shouldn't change from whose perspective I'm looking at it from. OK, so what does this p equals 2 thirds mean then? We, we found the probability, but now how do we interpret that? Well, in both of these, we had this probability p uh, adjacent to or associated with the uh, utility for pasta. So that means that in our mixed solution, we should have two-thirds of the outcomes being pasta and the other one-third being potato, because one minus two-thirds is one-third. Uh, we could have a lottery where we give uh, two-thirds of the slips or balls uh, the label pasta and one-third potato, um, or some other situation where we mix uh, options according to this proportion, where two-thirds of them are pasta, one-third are potato. Okay, big thing to take away from this is the interpret the both solving for these probabilities using the utilities and the solution and interpreting it. In the next problem, we have more points. We have more uh, outcomes possible. Further, I have a status quo point that is not at zero zero. It's at two one. So I create lists for these, um, I'll plot them again, and I see the situation. Here's my payoff polygon, so my options are in just this positive, uh, just in the positive quadrant here, in the first quadrant. And here's my status quo point at 2, 1. So the, the, there was a property of linear invariance in uh, Nash's criteria for his solution that says, we can actually slide this down and over, and the geometry of the situation won't change. So our solution will have the same. Our solution will stay consistent as well. So to do that, I have to move all of my y's down one and the x's back two. Uh, in Python, I can do that with a simple little list comprehension on my original list, and I get my new coordinates. Again, I want to plot this all, so I'll, I'll create another um, array with my new coordinates after shifting things. Plot it again, and here we are with the adjusted. Here now our status quo is at 0, 0. And we've only got four points to consider, B, C, D, and E, in the, uh, in the first quadrant. If you want to see how I labeled these points, you can see that I'm also just adding text to the axis and the plot as above. Um, OK, well, to, to narrow it down, what we can do is we can look at the product of x times y at these vertices. And when we do that, I'm going to again use a list comprehension, and I pop those, those two lists together with this zip command. I see that the products are negative 7, 24, 30, 28, 16, negative 18, and 6. So, here are the ones that I need to worry about because those are the big ones. We're trying to maximize the product of x times y. So it's going to be either between 24 and 30 or 30 and 28. How do I decide? Well, I have to consider both of these. First, I'll go ahead and consider between bc, and I'll do the same thing as above. I'll write the equation for the line, maximize it, and see where that happens. It turns out that happens at x equals 8. For CD, I'll do the same thing. I need to write an equation, maximize the product of x times that equation. When I do that, I find out that x uh, is 5 and a half. But there's an issue here. Because if I look at these two points, BC, it starts at x equals 4 and ends at x equals 6. So x equals 8 is not a part of that line segment. 
In other words, 8, if I draw a line through this, if I extend this line through BC, right, this little, li this little line segment doesn't have an x equals 8. It, x equals 8 happens out here. So it's not a part of this segment. Same thing with the other example, 5.5. .5. This starts at 6, 6 to 7. So 5.5 .5 is not on this line segment. It's not a part of CD. What does that mean? Well, that means that the, the maximum happens in, at that point that those two things share. If you were to extend this line and extend this line, the only thing they have in common is this point C, hence C is our solution. C is where the maximum occurs on that boundary, just on these line segments, right here at C. Okay, so a couple of different um, kind of things to be aware of and how to interpret solutions in, um, in our game theory problems with Nash equilibria. And also some extra stuff with, uh, with plotting and using patches, uh, using arrays to plot points. Um, good things to know, but you can do this all by hand as well.